Hello everyone and welcome back to where we sometimes talk about thrillers on Thursdays and today's video is going up Wednesday and it's not about thrillers so I don't know why I give that intro but today we're going to be doing a spoiler free review of the book and the movie The Wonder and the movie just came out at least in the US on Netflix really recently so I wanted to get this up soon. Even though I haven't posted in a few weeks I have been filming nearly every single day and that's because I mentioned this in my last video but I was on a two-week trip in Ecuador and the Galapagos. I posted a lot on Instagram stories, but I also did film a vlog and was vlogging every single day, but that footage is gonna take forever <laughs> to edit. So I just wanted to get up this video in the meantime. I will have timestamps down below, but we're first gonna do a spoiler-free book review, then a spoiler-free movie review, then we're gonna talk about some book spoilers, and then we're gonna talk about some movie spoilers. So if you have not read or watched either don't worry, feel free to make sure you just exit out at the right point. But let's go ahead and review The Wonder by Emma Donahue. So first, if the author's name sounds familiar, that's because she also wrote Room, which was incredibly popular and also made into a movie. But The Wonder it takes place in the Irish Midlands in the year 1859, and our protagonist is Lib. She is an English Nightingale nurse, and she is called to come to Ireland to watch a young girl. This young Irish girl who's about 11 supposedly has been fasting and has not eaten in four months. And so of course the surrounding town is very Catholic and they believe that this is a miracle. Of course, Lib being a woman of science thinks that it's a hoax. So it's about the tension between those two groups and discovering is this a hoax or is this a miracle? So let's go ahead and jump into the pros and what I really enjoyed about this book. First, the experience of reading this and just take this with a grain of salt because it's nothing like this. I'm just talking about the feeling of reading this. The feeling of reading this felt like the experience I felt watching Midnight Mass. And I have a review of Midnight Mass. I'll link it down below. It's one of my favorite horror miniseries of all time. And to be clear, this is by no means a horror novel in any sense, but with its themes around religion and certainty around religion, it, it really, if you're someone like me who grew up in a religious family, I grew up in a very Catholic family, it really, really hit home. And I would be curious to hear the opinion of someone who is very religious. I'd be curious, for example, for my mom to read this book and get her take on what her experience was reading it. But I'm putting that in prose because this book and the movie as well really, really impacted me and I couldn't stop thinking about it for a really long time. I also thought, and of course, I won't talk about this until we get into the spoilers, I thought the tension between Lib and the townspeople and, you know, Anna, I don't know if I said that, Anna is the 11 year old girl's name, the tension between Lib and especially the family and the committee that has brought her on and this other nun to take turns watching the girl to determine whether or not she's eating. I thought that tension between them as well as whether or not this is a miracle or a hoax was laid out really, really well. And I actually think that that piece, and I'll talk about this a little bit later on, I think that worked a little bit better as a book just because you're, of course, as the reader, not able to really physically see Anna. This is my first time reading a book by this author. I haven't read Room and I really, really enjoyed her writing style. And I will say, even if you can guess the ending and what's going on pretty early on, I guessed it before it was revealed it doesn't take away, at least in my opinion, from the enjoyment of the book. Say, for example, you're reading a fast-paced but poorly written but addictive thriller. In those senses, I think the twist or what's revealed really hinges on, you know, your enjoyment of the book because what you're waiting on is that twist. In this book, it's really more of a character study, the themes around religion, and it is a slower-paced book. So just do not pick this up if you're looking for a really fast, intense read. I, I'd be curious for those who have read this because I intentionally have not read many reviews of the book. I enjoyed that there was some subtle romance. I liked, you know, the heat that was built. To be clear, when I say heat, a very small amount, but I personally really enjoyed it. I like a little bit of romance in books like this, but I really, really enjoyed this. But let's go ahead and hop into the cons. <laughs> I really just have one con, and I know I said that I don't consider it a con, that the book is a little bit on the slower side, I'm a fan of slower paced books, but the one piece I did find really, really repetitive is there are so many scenes of Lib going to someone and saying, I think this girl is going to die because she's starving herself, and in the end, whether it's the family members or the committee or the people of the town saying, no, 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 this is a miracle, that happens just countless times. I, mean, I understand the point of the repetition and that no one's believing Lib when she feels so sure that this is a hoax, but it just got a little bit old. I don't think we needed that many scenes of it happening. I think we could have gotten the point with a little bit less. 
But in the end, I really enjoy this book. And even though this isn't a horror or a thriller novel, it's still a little bit on the eerie, creepy side. So we're still gonna use the candle rating and I will give this four out of five creepy candles. Now let's get into the spoiler-free movie review. It has more or less the exact same plot, so we can skip the plot summary and get straight into the pros. My favorite aspect about this movie, which I was surprised by, I didn't think I'd be saying this, was really the score. And I'm filming this in the middle of the workday, don't tell my manager, that's why I've got my work shirt on. But today when I was working and not in meetings, I had my headphones in and I was constantly just listening to the soundtrack. So eerie and haunting and didn't feel similar to a score that I can think of at least from another movie and it just fit the tone so, so well. I'm not gonna spend time talking about how great Florence Pugh's acting is because I'm obsessed with her. I'm assuming a lot of you are and so as no surprise, she was incredible. But the person I was surprised how much I enjoyed their acting was the young girl who plays Anna and the actress's name is Kyla Lord Cassidy. And she has some very intense, difficult subject matter that she has to speak through. And I thought she really, at least for me, was the standout of the film. And I wouldn't be surprised to see if we see her in a lot of things going forward. This is also a weird thing that I was surprised I liked so much, but the cinematography and especially how color was used, I don't find myself finishing a movie and thinking about the colors of the movie afterwards, but I cannot get the shade of blue of Florence Pugh's dress out of my mind. <laughs> it just really, really stuck with me and it's just a beautiful, beautiful film to watch. I'm actually pretty upset that I didn't get the chance to see this in theaters because I think it would have been a really, really intense movie to see on the big screen. And without giving anything away, I'm gonna talk about this more in the spoiler movie section. The way the movie opens and closes is very bizarre and it's unexpected whether or not you've read the book or not. <laughs> you're gonna feel like you're watching the wrong movie, but it really was bizarre. But I thought I would still include it in prose because it did suck me in and it left me thinking about the movie a lot more than I thought I would considering, you know, I'd already just seen the similar plot within the book. For cons, I have only one, but it is kind of a big one. And it's gonna sound like an irritating thing that someone who, you know, oh, I've read the book always says about a movie, but just, but I will say, I thought the movie was way too short. And I am not someone who always says that about movie adaptations, but this is a pretty short movie. I think the runtime is maybe an hour and 40 minutes or so. And I really think 15 more minutes, and I can't really say which scenes without spoiling things, but certain scenes were either missing or felt really rushed especially with the more side characters, for example, the journalist and his mother. And without those scenes, I don't think you had as much emotional impact with those characters and decisions seemed a little bit strange. Again, I understand every scene that's in the book is not gonna be in the movie, but I think if just, and I'll say which scenes in the spoiler section, but I think just 15 more minutes would have made this just incredible. In the end, I really enjoyed this as well. And I'm gonna give the movie four to five creepy candles. Okay, now let's get into some book spoilers and then I'll have a separate section of movie spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled, please feel free to click out now. For book spoilers, I have to say my favorite, favorite scene that's in the book that is not in the movie. And I can understand why this wouldn't have been able to be in the movie. In the book, there's a moment where Lib has been watching Anna so, so closely that she's starting to wonder how is she not eating? And it's not that she believes it's a miracle, but she's really starting to just go crazy wondering how is this possible? And is there something else going on? And in the book, there's a moment where she has the journalist come see Anna so that she can get someone else's opinion. And he looks at her and immediately when Anna leaves, he tells Lib, she is so clearly dying. She looks like she's on the verge of death. And it's a slap in the face of reality to Lib because she's been, it's like when you're watching someone so closely that you don't notice their hair growing right, you're not seeing the changes. And she feels just dumbstruck that she has not been seeing Anna wasting away in front of her eyes. I understand why that couldn't be done in the movie because in the book, you as a reader aren't physically seeing Anna, but I just, I had to give that scene a shout out because I thought it was done so, so well and it really hit me. Okay, now let's go ahead and get into movie spoilers. So I will say some changes that I didn't mind and I thought were really interesting was Lib taking the type of drug to help her fall asleep and I assume help with her anxiety. I've seen different opinions online. Some are saying it was opium. Some are saying it was, I might pronounce this wrong, laudanum, which I've read in some places is a form of heroin that people used before they realized how horrible it was for you. 
So I didn't mind that at all, but a couple changes I'll mention that I was not as much of a fan of I want to get into. So first, when I said that I thought the movie was a little bit too short, there were two specific scenes that I really wish were included. One, I wish that there had just been a little bit more development with Lib and the journalist's relationship. In the book, it builds up in a really nice way. I don't mind at all that the sex scene happens in the movie, even though that doesn't happen in the book. But I asked my boyfriend who was watching it with me, who has not read the book, and I said, did that feel out of nowhere to you? And, and he was like, yes, that felt very out of nowhere. Again, I don't think it's weird that it was included. Lib's an atheist. It's not completely against her character. I get that it's, they had this buildup of like angry tension at what was happening and needed to feel something good. I get it. But it just, the way it happened in the show, to me at least, felt really bizarre. My least favorite scene, I will say in the movie, is where Lib is trying to convince the journalist, I think it's William, to try and save Anna. And I just thought that scene felt really awkward and rushed in the movie and was done a lot better in the book. And then the last thing I want to talk about that I thought was interesting was Kitty being the one who is breaking the fourth wall and essentially acting as the narrator. Now in the book, Kitty is, I believe it's Anna's cousin. And I don't want to call her an idiot because that's not very kind, but she's not a very interesting character. She's screaming a lot. She's crying a lot of times. And in the movie, she breaks the wall, I think it is two or three times. And I just think I, I don't dislike the fourth wall breaking. I understand what they're getting at with this being viewed as a story and the stories that these girls and these families would tell themselves because this was a real thing that happened throughout the years. The instances of fasting girls, if you Google it, it's really an interesting part of history. But I thought making Kitty be the one who's breaking the fourth wall was just a bizarre choice. And yes, I get it, it gets people talking, but I almost wish it had been a random townsperson. Um, and I think if you've read the book and knowing Kitty's character, it makes it feel even more bizarre. So again, I liked the opening and the close. I liked the fourth wall breaking. I just didn't particularly like that Kitty was the one doing it. Even though I've heard interpretations that that is not Kitty and she is just the narrator when she's doing those scenes, but whatever. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what were your thoughts on The Wonder, whether it's the movie or the book. I would love to hear your interpretations down below, but I hope you all are doing well and staying safe and I'll see you in the next one.